In this video, I want to talk a little bit more about neuropathology, or the kinds of diseases and abnormalities that can affect the nervous system. Neuropathology. And I'm going to go into just a little bit more detail, but I'll also save lots of detail for later videos. Almost every type of pathology that affects tissues elsewhere in the body may involve the nervous system, but the resulting neurological syndromes may be very different due to its unique structure and function. There are also some pathologies that involve the electrical excitability of neurons that are specific to the nervous system, with only some similarities to dysfunction in other electrically excitable tissues. Certain neural tissue responses are common with all sorts of different types of pathology. So let me just write a few of them over here that kind of cross lots of these categories I'm going to talk about. One common reaction is inflammation. Inflammation. And we're all familiar with inflammation from getting little cuts and scrapes. And you can see on your skin that that area will often get red and swollen and hot and painful. Inflammation in the neural tissues often acts a little differently than that, but there often are a lot of similarities, such as cyst cells of the immune system moving into that area. Increased water content in the neural tissues is a common response, which we call edema. Edema. And the increased water content can be inside neural cells or outside neural cells. And when it's inside neural cells, we call that intracellular edema. Intracellular edema. And if it's outside cells, we call that extracellular edema. Extracellular edema. In the central nervous system specifically, the brain and the spinal cord, we can see a reaction that we call gliosis. Gliosis. And this actually has a few different names. It's carried out by cells called astrocytes. Astrocytes, which are one type of glial cell. So gliosis refers to extra glial cells. But because it's astrocytes specifically that are mostly involved, it's also called astrogliosis or astrocytosis or reactive astrocytosis. And with this reaction, what happens is that astrocytes, which are these glial cells, they're not neurons, they're supporting cells with lots of branched processes, they will multiply, so they'll form more astrocytes, and then they'll often grow longer, thicker processes going out in lots of directions and actually form a type of scar tissue we actually call that the glial scar, the gliosis, the glial scar. And so areas of injury in the central nervous system can develop these areas of gliosis, which are a type of scar tissue that happens in the central nervous system. And it's got some similarities and some differences to scar tissue that happens in other tissues of the body. And one last kind of common reaction that can occur with pathology of neural tissues is something called demyelination. 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 And if you recall that neurons, some neurons on their axons will have other cells that wrap their membrane around to create this material called myelin that helps neurons transmit information down the axon. And certain types of pathology can cause the loss of that myelin out of proportion to any loss of axons, so that the main problem is the loss of myelin. And we call that demyelination. And that can happen in both the central and the peripheral nervous system. So more on all of that later. But what I want to do with the rest of this video is just talk a little bit more about these categories of neuropathology, which can be divided in many different ways with various amounts of gaps and overlaps. The system I like to use has these 11 categories. So let me just write out. 1 through 11. And I find that most neurological disorders will fall into one of these categories of neuropathology, although some may have aspects of several different categories. Now within each category, there are often many shared features. So the advantage of kind of grouping disorders into types of neuropathology is that you can see some patterns, some similarities within the group although some of these groups are much more homogenous than others. Another thing I'll mention briefly and a lot more later is that some types of neuropathology affect the nervous system just when it's developing, which we call neurodevelopmental disorders, more on that later, or some just affect the nervous system after development is finished, while some can actually affect the nervous system either while it's developing or later after it's finished developing. So the first category of neuropathology I like to think about 
I call the genetic neurological disorders. Genetic. And these disorders are abnormalities of genes in the DNA, such as the common disorder called Down syndrome. Many neurological disorders have a small genetic contribution, meaning that a predisposition to the disorder seems to run in families, although there appears to be some other factor that's kind of the major player in causing the syndromes. So those are usually not considered primarily genetic disorders. They're usually lumped into the other categories, and we'll talk more about that later. The next category I like to think about is called idiopathic, which is just a fancy way to say that we don't know exactly what the cause is. We may have a partial understanding of the cause, but we, we definitely don't have a full understanding of the cause. Many idiopathic neurological disorders involve the loss of certain populations of cells inside the nervous system, such as Parkinson's disease. And we often call these degenerative disorders or neurodegenerative disorders because these certain cell populations are degenerating or being lost. While other idiopathic neurological disorders involve episodic or continuous neural dysfunction, by which I mean neurological syndromes that come in little spells or are there all the time, and we don't see any loss of any particular cell population in the nervous system. A common example of this are migraine headaches and all the other primary headache disorders. The next category I like to think about I call vascular disorders. Vascular. And these involve abnormalities of blood vessels. Common example of this would be the disorder ischemic stroke where usually a blood clot has blocked an artery to part of the brain and caused injury to that part of the brain. The next category I like to think about I call epileptic neurological disorders. Epileptic. And these disorders involve what are called seizures. Seizures. Which are episodes of a specific type of abnormal electrical activity in the cerebrum specifically. Most epileptic disorders are genetic or idiopathic or a little bit of both, where there might be a genetic predisposition, but then there's a, another major contributor that we don't understand to how the disorder develops. So you could eliminate this as a category and just lump these all under genetic or idiopathic disorders. But these are such common and distinctive neurological disorders that it, I kind of feel they deserve their own category because they're such a major medical problem. The next category I like to call mechanical neurological disorders. Mechanical. And this I further divide up into two categories. One is trauma, and this involves tissue injury from a sudden physical force, like a sudden severe blow to the head causing traumatic brain injury, injury to the brain. The other category involves a term that is not used very consistently, and that term is compression. And the idea with compression is that there's also a physical force on neural tissue causing neural tissue dysfunction, but the speed is not as fast as trauma. It's a slower physical force on the neural tissue that may or may not be changing over time, such as when a particular nerve gets slowly compressed or pinched in the wrist for the carpal tunnel syndrome. The next category I call autoimmune. Autoimmune. And this involves abnormal activity of the immune system leading to neural tissue dysfunction. So this is where the immune system, instead of fighting off infection, is actually causing dysfunction of the body's own tissues, and auto means self. So the immune system is kind of attacking it itself. The so immune system is attacking other tissues in the body. A common example of this is the autoimmune neurological disorder called multiple sclerosis, where the immune system causes demyelination in areas of the central nervous system. The next category I call neoplastic. Neoplastic. And this category involves tumors, which are where the body's own cells or a population of the body's cells starts dividing inappropriately and form tumors. And neural cells themselves may become neoplastic, they may form tumors, particularly these astrocytes that are involved in gliosis. But more commonly, a tumor forms somewhere else in the body, such as the lungs, like lung cancer, and then spreads to involve areas of the nervous system, like lung cancer spreading up into the brain. The next category I call metabolic. Metabolic. And this term's a little tricky because people often use this in a couple of different ways. Where I usually use this term is where there's increased or decreased amounts of some substance 
that's normally present in the body, such as the polyneuropathy, the diffuse dysfunction of nerves that may occur with high blood sugars that can occur in the disorder of diabetes. The term metabolic is also used for a few rare neurodevelopmental disorders where the nervous system doesn't develop normally that involve abnormal molecular pathways inside cells. And many of those are actually genetic disorders, and I would tend to put them up here under the genetic disorders. The next category I call infectious. Infectious. And this involves pathogens which is a fancy term for germs, pathogens. And there are many different pathogens that may affect the nervous system, such as certain viruses that can invade the brain tissue and cause brain tissue dysfunction. The next category I call nutritional. Nutritional. And this involves a deficiency of something in the diet. Some component of the diet is inadequate, leading to dysfunction of neural tissues. A common example of this is a polyneuropathy that can occur if a person doesn't get enough of a vitamin called vitamin B12. And the last category I call toxic neurological disorders. And these involve exposure to some substance that's not normally present in the body. Some substance. For example, there is a polyneuropathy, diffuse dysfunction of the peripheral nerves, that may occur with some of the chemotherapy drugs that are used for cancer. So this can involve both things that are not used as medications or side effects from medications. So more on all of this later, but I just wanted to introduce some of these bigger picture ideas about neuropathology, and we'll get further into each of the categories in later videos.